Hello and welcome to another video from Alberta Bushcrafter. It is winter. In fact, it is currently it's 15 degrees below zero. Uh, that's in Celsius or centigrade. So it's a fairly cold day outside. And <clears throat> I live in northern Alberta, Canada. So that's a lot of the year. We get below freezing temperatures, nasty weather. And that's what this video was about. It's actually about mitts and uh, my choices for mitts and also hand warmers because there's a lot of different ones out there. So let's start with the mitts. Actually what I like, uh, I still do a bit of hunting, more like pest control in winter and I like these. So these are actually a, these are a couple of different, now they don't come in just green or black or whatever, but these are a set of convertible mitts from Rocky. Why I like these are they are a full mitt and you've got snow camo and uh, looks like Mossy Oak Infinity or Mossy Oak and Obsession. So at least a couple different colors. Uh, but the nice thing is got a magnetic clasp on the back and you've seen the glove vertibles or so on. Well these are uh, well, they're not bad. They've got gloves inside the mitts. Not terribly warm. They've also got, you know, the thumbs come open so you can uh, shoot better with them. And for any kind of, I actually find sometimes if it's really, really cold, I'll just flip this open to get a hold on my key and open the door of my house. But the other neat thing about these, they've got some thinsel it in them, not a lot. But if you look here, there is a pouch. And that pouch, you can see here, right? That pouch is for a hand warmer. And when I got these a couple years ago, that's where the fun began. Uh, let's see. So these are actually made by Rocky. Get them at Canadian Tire. Get them on sale, they're about 20 bucks. These are by Hot Shots. They're a similar one. They got more padding or, or more grip material on the palms. I like the Hot Shot ones. They're a little bit warmer. They also got a little pad on there so you can use your smartphone, which is a nice little innovation. And the same pocket on the back. One of the things I don't like is this material in really cold weather gets stiff. But once again, similar, and it's got a holder for a heater. Now, this is where I ran into some issues, because these are the first type of heaters that everyone goes to. One's a heat factory, one's just a grabber, also called hot shots. These are chemical heaters. Once you open these up and you shake them, they react with the air, and they heat up. One of the things though is they don't heat up very much. These mitts are made for them. Don't heat up much, but you take it out, you shake it, you unzip it, you put it in here. I found though, especially on really cold days, these heaters don't throw a lot of heat. They may throw heat for seven or eight hours, but they throw just a tiny trickle of heat. So, in more moderate winters, these are great. They're a little expensive. But more severe winters, you need something else. That's where the second one comes in. Now these can throw a fair bit of heat if they work for several hours. This is a Zippo heater. You see how it works. You've got a little, basically a catalytic burner on here. So you fill it up. Make sure the cotton's touching it as so you'd fill it up through there, those little slots. You can get spare burners as well. And then you gotta hold a match to it for a while until it it actually starts heating up on its own. And you got this little pouch in here where it goes. You don't necessarily want to use these outside the pouch. They are fairly heavy, but let's take a look. I did use these for a few days. I found after a while they stopped working. And when they stop working, well, they're not great, are they? 
almost better for a pocket where there's some air circulation. But, as you can see, even going sideways, they don't fit too perfectly in here. Well, they'll fit, but just barely. Now, now, it's not fitting, but the other problem with the Zippo heaters, they're more for a, they're a good option if you can get them to work. They do warn you about low temperature burns because they can, they stay fairly hot for quite a while, but you can see here they're interfering with the mitten. So these aren't made for Zippo hand warmers, you have to keep this in your pocket. Another option, little on the pricey side. These are 30 or 40 bucks each. Plus, you got to carry volatile fuel around. Not the greatest option for inside a mitt, but really cold weather, it'll be okay if you put it inside your jacket. Just make sure you move around a lot. Third choice, and I still see these. This is one of those Coglin's hand warmers. Now, a lot of people don't like these. What you'd actually do, you put one of these fuel sticks. I'm not going to light it inside because they stink. You put these fuel sticks in, they're actually a charcoal with a bit of silvering or something on it, and you blow the end into a complete coal, cover it up, and it should work. It should stay, these are very good for staying warm, but again, they don't fit the mitt. Um, these are good, but they're smelly. Quite smelly at times, in fact. Now, are they great? Yeah, they're cheap. They do the job, but you are actually carrying a live coal in here, and if they open up, I've actually burned the inside of my coat with one of these once, one of the older ones when the latch opened up, and they don't make these like they used to. They seem to go out a lot, but this is a low-cost alternative for a heater. So there's a few of the options you have for hand warmers. There's another one, which is they actually make battery powered heaters that are uh, you can recharge on USB they're in the 30 to 50 dollar range um, I've tried them in here and one of them fits but uh, the other one does not and the other one's actually got you know you can dump charge from it and it's got an LED light and so on I kind of like them smaller they're fairly heavy if I get one I will review it but they don't throw a lot of heat as well they throw comparably a little less than the Zippo so that's all our options? Not really. Here's another one that a lot of people don't think about. This is something I got at Lee Valley Tools, and they also sell at Mountain Equip Equipment Co-op in another way. But this is Easy Heat. These are rechargeable chemical heaters. So you can actually see there are liquid inside. But watch what happens. You can see there's a little metal tab there, so you Click the tab and watch. Now these are more for emergency heat by a long shot. So there's a chemical reaction in there. They're for emergency heat, but oh boy, is that already toasty. These are great. I keep a couple of these with me at all times. So that's what it does. And when you're done with it, this will continue to throw heat for 15 to 30 minutes. So it's a more of an emergency heater. I do like this one the best though because you can carry a few of them around and it's good. When they get old though, actually first off, to recharge these you just drop them in boiling water for 10 minutes until they go back to this all liquid again. These are fun, I'm going to do another one. So there we go once again. You can see the uh, liquid is turning to a solid. And these are really, really great for if you just need a burst of heat. Now, they only have about a hundred uses though, which is a hundred more than these, or 99 more than these guys. This one has been used about 105 times, and you can see after you boil it, they eventually don't work too well. Matter of fact, just shaking that set it off. So this is going to be disposed of responsibly. This one's done. So again, once these get old, they, they still stay crystallized and they uh, they have to be gotten rid of. Mountain Equipment Co-op also sells one. This is larger by a long shot. 
And this is called a toasters. So this would be again more for body heat in a pocket. I actually haven't used these. Oh wow, that's getting warm already. You can see these are my favorite type of heaters if necessary. Just keep me warm enough until I can light the stove, build a fire, or something like that. So these are all personal heaters. This has got a stronger bag. The toasters are actually a, a much more robust bag. And yeah, they throw a nice bit of heat. That's what they look like when they're fired up. Remember, these are not for all day heating. These are for maybe half an hour and that's about it. So those are different choices. Do I have a favorite? Yeah, it's these. It's the Easy Heats and the toasters. Because I'm usually in a heated vehicle There's and with good insulation. You learn how to do that when you're up north. But these are handy. My second choice, actually still these guys, if I can get them working. Third would be the Zippos. And last resort are these little hand warmers, which I carry a few in the vehicle just in case. So that is, you know, other than looking at the USB powered heaters, that's a brief description of hand warmers and uh, gloves. Back to gloves for a second though, another option, especially in cold weather, is to wear, wear a thin pair of gloves and then a big pair of you know, deer skin or snowmobile mitts or whatever. That allows your hands to stay warm and you've still got the glove inside if you need to take the glove off, you know, whatever. It's a little more to pack, but it, it really does work. It's actually quite handy and warmer by a fair bit than just these guys. Okay, you can see this is another day and I was actually editing this video and I thought I'd add a bit more because I described something but didn't really show it. That is those little flip top mitts are fairly good with the heaters or without. Uh, the wind tends to cut through them a fair bit though. But if you are in, are in extreme cold, what you want to do is get yourself a set of ordinary uh, wool or synthetic gloves, just the basic ones, then get yourself a big mitt. It doesn't have to be deer skin like this. It can be just a big nylon snowmobile mitt. And the whole idea behind that is that the mitts, you've got the, the small gloves to keep you from contact frostbite, which is, by the way, very, very painful. Uh, but you've got the big mitts for insulation for when you don't need to um, actually you know, work delicately with your hands. By the way, I have no idea what this patch of uh, fake fur on this deerskin mitt is for. I have no idea because this one doesn't have one. But these are incredibly warm. Synthetic snowmobile mitts will work just as well. So the idea is, if you need to get out of your hand is still um, insulated to some degree, so you get the best of both. They're a bit bulky. Uh, you can also fit one of these inside the big mitt and really keep your hands toasty. Another thing I should mention is that if your hand and feet get cold, another really good hand warmer is to put on a better hat. This is your basic standard watchman's cap. It's got thinsulate in it so it's very warm. Uh, works right under your hood. But these are very compressible, very light. They barely cost anything. They're like a five bucks or something. Uh, up here in northern Alberta and I'm really gonna say people don't take offense. You know, you're watching this channel, we're really hoping you're not a real animal rights type, but in extreme weather, this is the kind of stuff you want to be wearing. One of these big hats with fur, whether it's real or fake, we don't really care much in my province, but you got these flaps to come down. Uh, this is incredible headgear. This is just a basic $40 one I got at Cabela's, and that's rabbit fur on that. But you can get them a lot more expensive. I know a few people who have two and three hundred dollar hats. So, again, another real um, hand warmer is to put on a hat because you lose a lot of heat through your head. I don't know if it's the seventy or ninety percent that it, that some of the experts say, 
yeah, you can. Uh, one last tip. These hand warmers, the hand warmers work best not in your gloves, but these hand warmers, the best job they do is actually when they're under your coat. I just discovered this again. I was wearing my flannel shirt on the way home and my hands are getting really cold. So I cracked a couple of these, tossed them in the twin pockets, which, you know, I've got a layer or two of insulation there. Did the coat up and that warmed my hands better than anything in the mitts would do. So that's a real important thing to remember too is, you know, if you can keep your core temperature up, that'll actually keep your hands feeling a lot warmer as well. And the other nice thing is because it's inside, the heat lasts a lot longer. These things, they say 30 to 45 minutes. These went longer than an hour. And the big ones, uh, I just tried again, they went almost two and a half hours. You can still feel some discernible warmth. So that's the funny thing is, they call them hand warmers where they're actually best inside your coat. Uh, don't do that with the flame ones though, like the Zippo. It's if you may be in your outer jacket. And same with the Coglins ones, but I... I wouldn't trust those right close to my skin because you will likely get a low temperature burn or if one of the little ones opens up um, you get a real burn so there's just a few more options for cold winter gear my favorite is actually this and these in real crummy weather that's about it for this topic this is another Alberta bushcrafter video I want to thank you for watching my name is Dean Take care and good day.